I'm Robert Scoble, and I'm going to talk to a real social media hero of mine, Phil Campbell, uh, who helped raise money for a town that was devastated and is doing a lots of other things with social media. And we're going to talk about the power of social media and the real ROI that uh, we never hear about. Who are you? So my name is Phil Campbell, at Phil Campbell on Twitter. I've been a uh, director of Geekery for about five or six years now. I started off as a video blogger. I got into video blogging because uh, a lot of the clients back in the day, they wanted video on the website, really excited by Real Player in like 1988, 89, and how do I get that on my website? I also did a lot of audio in the early days. And the biggest problem I found is that I was buying hardware for each one of these projects and only using it once. And so I was like, this sucks. I need to find something, a community online that I can be part of. So I came, I did a search for, you know, how to use video or something like that. And I found a Yahoo group of video bloggers. And in early, like 2002, 2003, started to find, started to see these people who were calling themselves citizen journalists. And I was like, what does that mean? I have no idea what that, that means. And what I found is like a hundred strong group of people who were making video content every day and they didn't get paid for it, they didn't have a director, but they wanted to share their lives, which was something that really fascinated me and I wanted to see what I could do with it. Yeah. And you've done quite a bit with it. <laughs> I've done a fair bit with it in the last five, six years. Yeah, I've yeah. done a whole bunch of stuff for Nokia. I did a whole bunch of stuff for uh, Verisign, which is my advocacy now. And I, I tend to play with this stuff, experiment with the new hardware. Obviously, Rackspace Cloud, to play a lot with cloud infrastructure. I think that's amazing that, we, that the yeah. web can do all the heavy lifting for us, people who go around interviewing people, and it's yeah. just being taken care of. Um, yeah, I, I, I am fascinated by this stuff. It reactivates people's lives. Uh, there is sentiment that we can send through the content that we make and share. Yeah. And uh, it's been really powerful to add it to my life. Yeah. Tell me about some of the things, because you, you, you're passionate about putting social back in a social. Yeah. Or, right. But what, what, tell me a story about what you've done, because you've helped raise money for towns that have been devastated. Right. And tell me some of those uh, right, so, things that you've done. Sure. So bolting on to the 2004, 2005 video blogging story, um, I grew up on uh, films from the US, geeky computer films based in the valley. You know, things like Electric Dreams, this yeah. idea of this guy who lives in Silicon Valley, buys a computer, drops champagne over it, it comes alive, like the very early Siri. And um, I, I was fascinated by it being a digital mecca. And as somebody who had a desktop computer in the UK, I knew I had to go to San Francisco at some point early on to get into the vibe, see what was going on. So I was part of a video blogging group and we made a video called Node 666 and I won an award at the vloggies. I went yeah. to the vloggies and got back to my hotel room about two o'clock in the morning and my friend bust through the room with two awards in his hand. I already picked up my awards, so I was panicking that he stole awards from his ceremony. So the first thing I did is search for my name on Google. And the first link that came, because I was looking to see if anybody had tweeted or said something like, Phil's stolen this or Phil's friend's stolen this. I was scared that we'd done something because I was a bit drunk. And the first link that came up was the town of Phil Campbell, right? And that freaked me out. There is a town in Alabama called Phil Campbell, Phil Space Campbell. It's a thousand people, 4.1 miles square, and it's in the deep south. I would have never known about it if it wasn't for the internet. So I was yep. fascinated. It's like, I must go to this place. It's a bucket list thing. In my life, I must go. As things happen, six years passed, I got onto other things. And then my friend who runs a search on me, a hashtag search said, hey, have you seen that the, the townies have a 100 year birthday party? And I was like, you're joking, I have to go. This is the time when I tick the bucket list and I go. So they set up a Facebook group, they brought in a, 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 about 300 people into this Facebook group, and they were looking for Phil Campbells from all around the world. So I, I thought, this is awesome, I have to go. From a social media perspective, there's a lot of content, a lot of stories, finding out the similarities between each person. And that, that really was interesting to me. Unfortunately, two weeks before I was meant to go, the town got devastated by an unprecedented EF5 tornado. It devastated 40% of the town, killing 27 people. Wow. Now, in a town of 1,000 people, 27 people dying, somebody knows somebody who died. Yeah. 
It's a small, it's small town America. And if we forget our small towns, then we've got no way of getting them back. Yeah. So within 10 minutes, and here's the power of social in the social media, we, did, we turned our get together event into a campaign. Yeah. So everybody just changed their whole idea about how we're going to do this. So we went there, we got NBC, we got Al Jazeera, we got Sky News, we got BBC News. They were following all the social stuff. I road tripped from Florida with a friend of mine, Chrissy, all the way up into Phil Campbell. We were live streaming in the car all the way up with little banners saying, donate now, donate now. And that got people interested what's going on, who's part of this. And basically the end result was that we raised about $70,000. Uh, we got Habitat for Humanity to come in and build a, a house in the actual town. Uh, we helped clean up, 19 of us helped clean up the, the, the play area that got devastated. Would have took a team of four people six weeks to fix. We did it in an afternoon. And you know, it's one of those moments in our life that I realized that, you know, how powerful the, that the internet has become for us as people. Because we can create social change in a globalized world. Yeah. And um, we don't have to just be behind our desktop to do it. Yeah. No, that's a great, great stuff. You know, so, thanks for doing that. No, I, I did it because you know, at the end of the day, it could be anybody's small town. Yeah. Right. And I saw for the first time this thousand-strong town using Facebook really, really efficiently. You know, like I was seeing messages in the group saying, "My car's broken down today. Can you come around and fix it?" And somebody, "Yeah, all right, I come." And we've got it. We've got to get that back in yeah. social. You know, of course, that's a natural thing that we do. Yeah. We, we, we know how to do that stuff. I want to bring everybody else with us. You know, the people who have got real good skills, but they're unemployed. That's why I built my studio, Five Camp. Yeah. It, I, I built this space to enable people to come into what we do and take for granted every day and allow them to have a voice. D dive in on that a little bit right. more. Mark Canner, uh, a friend of mine who started Macro, Macro Mind, which became Macro Media, which got bought by nice. Adobe, he moved to Cincinnati. He keeps t talking about how he's helping to create jobs there with social media. Right. It, unpack on what, what your, some of your ideas and some of the things that, sure. that you've seen work. Sure, so one of the things I've noticed in the last four or five years is that while I've been doing advocacy work for brands, it's all very well while you're in the, in the moment, you're sort of going from one place to another place to another place, and you're focused on you. You're focused on your business, you're focused on your brand, how you can be good, become a good advocate. But I think really the power of social is, is helping other people to achieve that too. We need more content producers to really drive this industry so that the bigger guys go, this is not a fad, it's not going away. You would think after five or six years people understand that by now, but yeah. they don't. So what I decided to do is I wanted to take an empty space, an abandoned space, and turn that into a social media pop-up studio. So I approached a business owner in the town where I come from, which is Nottingham, and said, give me six months and I'll prove to you that social media works. And so basically we got probably two or three grand's worth of equipment. Low end, we're not talking super high end. I didn't have to take in any investors. You didn't get any of these weird lights. Not, not any of this awesome stuff that you got on Rackspace. Yeah. Rackspace has got it all popping today. Yeah. Um, so what I did is I built it up and told the story about how we filled that space. And by doing that, it made it acceptable for everybody. It wasn't now when, you, when you came in there, how much open space in this building was there? Like this. No, but, but how, how, how oh, many right. tenants so, were so there? In, tenants in the building was probably about 14, and the building probably holds about 32, 34. And the guy thought I was crazy. He was like, I don't know what you do, what is I this I think you're you crazy, but. That's uh... awesome, I think you're crazy <laughs> too. <laughs> but so I, I showed him that we make content, I talk about the things that I'm interested in, I showed him the, the advocacy, the hardware stuff that I've been doing for Nokia and all those different things, and he was interested. So we, we built up as far as we could go, then we went to South By and we won some money from seedups.com, an Irish like uh, uh, competition uh, for about 25 companies. We did a 60 second pitch and we won the money and that paid for the rent for the next 18 months. And within those six months of that trial, we have brought businesses, tenants into the building because of what we're doing down in the basement. People understand that they now need to use this method of communication to talk about their small businesses. So it's sort of reactivating empty spaces by putting a minimum tool set of capture equipment and then going out to five or 10 blocks around the area and saying, hey, just come and use our studio. Yeah. So we have three kind of pricing brackets like uh, non-for-profits and charities, we do it for free, but we limit the amount of hours per month that they're allowed to use the space, obviously because of the amount of time involved. And then we have small businesses that might be book owners or people talking about 
a local car lot and they come in and record X amount of episodes and then they release it as part of a strategy over three or six months. Yep. So all the heavy lifting is done behind the scenes so they can get on with what they, they're passionate about, their job. Yep. So it's, it's been interesting because there's an eco point to it as well. I hate seeing buildings empty. You know, like, yep. and I hate people who just sit on it and say the recession's gonna go away and then, you know, I'm not gonna adjust my prices. I, I think the building deserves this amount of rent. Why do that? Yep. Why not get your social advocates that are in the area to use your space and talk about your space as a social object? And, and by doing that too, uh, most my brother owns a bar, right? He's not a social media guy. He doesn't know really what to do with Facebook. Right. I, I try to help him a little bit here and there. And hey, why don't you put a picture up of your bar or something? Right. It's 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 a struggle for people like that, right? right. Or uh, you know, a car a, a car wash owner. You know, right. they don't think about Facebook all day long. They're washing no. cars. Right. But being have a space like this lets them come in and share ideas with people, other business people, to get ideas of how to get customers in the door. Right. So I mean, the whole idea with it really was, how can I, how can I a explain to people what I do? Yeah. Um, b I'm going to inspire people that technology should not be scary. We have people buying tablets for the first time, and it's their first computer because of the UI, there's no keyboard or mouse, they like the wafting, they like the moving things around. Yeah. We've seen a revolution in, in people buying computers now and it's exploding exponentially. People want to be part of it because it's now comfortable to use. Yeah. So I guess I'm just a conduit for people to feel that it's okay to make stuff. Because yeah. one thing about content creation is if you don't have an idea or a message or a destination, why do it? Yeah. You know. So we're just a, we're just a halfway house for that. Very cool, thanks so much for doing all this. Uh, no where do we find you on the web? So, at Phil Campbell on Twitter. I, my website is me.dm, medium. Uh, blog at blog.medium, and also fibercamp, fibercamp.tv. Very cool, thanks so much. Thank you, Robert. Thanks Appreciate for coming it. in. Thank you. Yeah.